Welcome back, Heat Seekers. Week 12 is nearly upon us. Do you want some waiver wire gold? Let's see what we can do. Who's the safest if we were to tell all the amazing viewers at home, who would we be going after? I think I'm putting my money on the safest, I think, is maybe Devonta Freeman. But the ones that I would want the most are Elijah Moore and Rashad Bateman. I think Darnell Mooney is very interesting as well. He seems to be somewhat quarterback proof in Chicago. So Justin Fields went down today and Andy Dalton came off the bench and Mooney didn't miss a beat with Dalton. Elijah Moore is starting to show what everyone was so excited about in the preseason. Rashad Bateman didn't do a ton today, but without Lamar, I expect him to do a lot more. Next, we talked about Freeman last week, and we talked about having a number one running back in an offense at this time of the season, and he seems to be holding on to that position. And Canarius Tony, who's yet to play this week, reportedly is healthy, and he's been mm -hmm. electric in times this season, and I think he can continue that, um, especially against Tampa, where there's an opportunity to throw the football. Yeah, for sure. And and when it comes to Devonta Freeman, it's tough because going into the season, we had Tyson Williams and Latavius and Le'Veon Bell, and all these different running backs. Devonta's looked yeah. the best and been the most productive. It feels like it's his job to lose at this point. So if I'm in need of a running back, I would definitely dump all my money into him and feel pretty okay about it. I know it's not the, yep. the most intriguing name in fantasy to get after, but he's been solid and productive no matter what's going on. So I would definitely go after him if you need some running back help or any of these other receivers. I think it's fair to put your fab on any of these other four and then just say, you know what, let's see what happens. Bateman feels safe. Tony, if he's healthy, feels pretty solid and elijah moore and mooney are both these are all quality guys to have on your bench if you've if you're like me and in one of my leagues earlier today i had to drop Allen robinson because the rosters are not very deep in a redraft yep. so i'm like he's just not producing and i need to get something going so i made a trade it's just been a weird season so i don't hate putting any of these guys on your bench even over some bigger name guys if they're not producing because we're getting to the point where you got to get those wins. You got to get ready for the playoffs. So, yeah, I agree. You're either rounding into the playoffs or you got to get there. So, you got to do what you got to do. And I agree. If you're a got to get there, go spend some money on Freeman because even with Murray back this week, it looks like his job. Absolutely. All right. Plan B, what are we looking at? Bit of a bigger tier. So, if you have a more of a tight end premium or maybe a, a half point to the tight ends, those top two names are very intriguing. Dan Arnold's been getting a ton of targets. Haven't looked at the information, but I bet he's borderline tight end one on a weekly basis with, I think he's getting six or seven targets a game right now. Yeah, he somehow put up a donut today, but Dan Arnold's been doing everything but scoring touchdowns. So he's been like five to six catches, 50, 60 yards. And as you and I have talked about on numerous occasions, nine to 10 fantasy points from a tight end is tight end one numbers. So I like Dan Arnold. I like Pat Fryermuth to your point, tight end premium specifically. Super flex wise, these three quarterbacks are definitely in play. Carson Wentz, managed through a tough matchup today. Mac Jones is super efficient, just needs to add the touchdown pass to his repertoire. And Cam Newton seems to be Cam Newton. He doesn't do a whole heck of a lot, but he runs for a score. He'll throw for a couple. And we put up 30 fantasy points today. So in super flex leagues, I like all of those guys. And then you end up with these running backs where Ramondre Stevenson is looks good, but who knows in New England. Alex Collins seems to be in a three-headed bit of a mess, but he is the lead guy there. And Michael Carter got hurt today, and I don't know how serious it is, but if he misses some time, Ty Johnson's stock goes way up. And oh, yeah. And Ty Johnson was already getting involved in the passing game, so absolutely, uh, that's, a, that's a plus. All right, rounding it out, plan C. I only see a few names left. What are we looking at? Marquez Valdez-Scantling and LaVishka Chenault. I'm about to say, this is the break glass in case of emergency. Hilliard was an interesting, uh, you know, when I was checking out the stat line because I didn't get to see that game. I'm like, yeah. where did this come from? I assumed it was the exactly. Foreman-Peterson show. It was uh, supposed to be. So I, I would venture to say this is the desperation to don't go after this tier unless you're in a super deep league and, and really in need of some help in a redraft format, I should say. Yeah. What are you thinking? I think if there's anything that I'm interested in here, it's maybe Latavius for some running back depth. But I like the upside of MVS. He had a really nice game today, and, and Rodgers was targeting him quite a bit, especially deep downfield. Mm -hmm. And LaVishka Chenault with Agnew getting hurt today might be relevant again. We talked about it this morning that it seems like Agnew had taken on the role that they wanted Travis Etienne to play. And then when Etienne was injured, it was the role they seemed to want LaVishka to play. And Agnew emerged as the guy. But with him going down, and again, I don't know how serious it is, it's possible that LaVishka becomes that gadgety type guy in the Jacksonville offense. So it'd be MVS one here, LaVisca two, and Murray three. The rest of them I'm not very interested. Unless, again, it's a super flex league. I think two is a rock solid QB two going forward. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those tiers where you just, 
you can keep your eye on them, but especially in the like the Hilliard and Van Jefferson and, and Marquez, we got to see a little bit more. We got to see what the, the teams are going to do with these guys. Hilliard, I keep looking back at his name because when he was with Cleveland, he had a little bit of time there, yeah. even though he was the Dearness Johnson before Dearness Johnson because Cleveland liked him. He'd get involved when guys were injured, performed well. There was a name to keep an eye on in case of emergency. This team needs a, a running back to step up. I know this week wasn't the most attractive game losing to, right. to the Texans. They're a playoff team. This is a playoff team. They will be a playoff team. Whoever that running back is that will help them push towards the playoffs. And that's the guy you want to be able to play on your roster. I just don't know if it's going to be a three-headed monster like we see in Baltimore or if it's going to be somebody finally takes the reins of this thing. I just don't know. If McNichols comes back, it could be a four-headed mm -hmm. monster. So it, it, it's mm -hmm. really interesting. Truth be told, I didn't even know Hilliard was playing for the Titans. I didn't know where he was until today. So clearly he wasn't on my radar. He still isn't. But you make a good point. They need a pass catching back, and it's either him or McNichols because uh, Foreman and, and Peterson proved that they are not that guy. They are not those guys. That's true. All right, folks. So if you have questions uh, about your waiver wire, if your waiver wire looks a little different and you got some other names available, drop them in the comments below. Jump over to the Discord and ask them in the Discord chat. We're here to help, and we'll see you guys later.